hip and pelvis palpations, I'm gonna start with some of the anterior palpations. First one really isn't palpations because um, it's not typically palpated in routine evaluations. However, it's important to be aware of as a point of referred pain. So I'm just gonna have my patient here feel his pubic symphysis and we'll just put a little sticker right on it. The second one is the anterior superior iliac spine, ASIS for short. What you're going to do is you're going to place your hands on the side of the patient's waist. On most patients, there should be bilateral bony prominences where your thumbs would naturally fall. In larger patients, um, it'll be harder to find. It's not If it's not visible, um, you have to begin on the iliac crest and palpate inferiorly along the border and you'll feel the iliac tubercles and then a curve in as you palpate the ASIS. So on him, we just start on the sides, just right where your thumbs would fall, feel some bony prominences, and that's your ASIS. So put some stickers right on there. So thumbs would fall, ASIS. Again, right where your thumb would fall, ASIS. The next one is the anterior inferior iliac spine, the AIIS. It's located inferiorly and slightly medial to the ASIS. It's not as easily palpable, but an important site for muscle attachment. So, starting here, a little bit inferior, a little bit medial, right there. fourth palpation is the sartorius. It originates at the ASIS and it runs diagonally along the side and it inserts medially distal to the knee. So inserts right here on the ASIS and you can just palpate all the way down distal to the knee. The fifth anterior palpation is the rectus femoris. It originates on the AIIS and it runs along the anterior thigh and attaches distal to the knee with the vastus group. So if the uh, rectus femoris starts here, you can just palpate all the way down anterior thigh. The medial palpations for the hip and pelvis. Um, for the purpose of this class, we will palpate all three of these muscles together as the adductor group. The first one that I'll be going over is the adductor Brevis, and that'll be right in this area. And the second one will be the adductor magnus, and that'll be in this area. And then the third one will be the adductor longus. For the lateral palpations of the hip and pelvis, we're going to start with the iliac crest. Um, those should be prominent on either side of the patient where the trunk begins to curve out. What you're going to do is you're going to palpate downward along the curvature until bone is felt. So just start at the curvature, palpate down, and you'll feel some bone right in here, and that's iliac crest. So I'm just going to put a mark on this again, palpate down. Um, yeah. Second one is the tensor fascia latte, TFL for short, or the Starbucks muscle, as we like to refer. Um, that it originates on the ASIS, and the muscle will turn into the IT band or the iliotibial band, and it runs along the lateral thigh, and it'll insert distal to the knee. So the IT band inserts on here on the ASIS. Down here and then it'll turn into the IT band. The third lateral palpation is your gluteus medius or glute med for short. Um, it is the superior lateral buttock and it's important muscle for hip stabilization. So just right over here your superior lateral buttock just right in there you can kind of feel palpate right in this area. Fourth one, iliotibial band, as we already went over, it um, originate, it, it comes off the TFL, which inserts, you know, ASIS and all the way down there. 
fifth one is the greater trochanter. Um, for this one, you're going to have your patient lying with their leg bent, or you can have them standing for leg bent with their knee on the table. Um, for most sit settings, if you're dealing with like an injured patient, you wouldn't want them standing just for liability reasons. So to gem demonstrate, we'll keep him laying down. Um, you're going to bend his leg um, about 45 degrees, and if you start from the ischial tuberosity and move in a lateral inferior direction at about a 45 degree angle, you'll find a bony prominence, and this should be the greater trochanter. So I'm just going to come in here, feel for the greater trochanter, and if you're struggling to find it, little trick, just kind of move his leg around and you'll find it right there. And the last one is the trochanteric bursa. You lie directly on top of the greater trochanter. It's difficult to differentiate from the surrounding tissue unless it's inflamed. So let's put it like down here. And that would be the greater trochanter, just a little bit up. I'm just kind of feeling it. Okay, so next we have the greater palpations. You can find the medial sacral crest by palpating L5 and moving inferiorly. Next is the posterior superior iliac spine. It is often located just below the dimples of the low back. Next is the gluteus maximus. It is the majority of the superficial buttock and runs down the posterior lateral thigh, ending approximately halfway down the femur. The issue of tuberosity and bursa, to have, you have the patient lying with leg bent or standing with knee on the table. Palpate the midline of the buttock as you move inferiorly. You may feel a bony prominence. The bursa is located directly on top of the tuberosity, but it is difficult to differentiate the surrounding tissues unless inflamed. To palpate the sciatic nerve, palpate laterally, approximately halfway between the greater trochanter and the, is the sciatic nerve. Although you may not feel the sciatic nerve, some patients feel tingling down the leg when palpating it. Next is the hamstring muscle group, which originate on the ischial tuberosity, running down the posterior thigh and starting distal to the knee. The parenchyma muscle runs superiorly to the ischial tuberosity near the sciatic nerve. And last is the sacralic joints. The SI joint starts at the PSIS and palpate inferiorly along the line of the sacrum.